Welcome to Fastware. Today we're going to be talking about object oriented model and why it is so terrible for performance. And the data layout that it enforces and how CPUs are just unable to cope with it. So on a screen currently you see a nice little object, called it an item. It has some attributes, but it's irrelevant what they are. The real problem with it is members of this object, which are not used together, are grouped together. It is very rare that a serial number would be used together with a quantity or weight, maybe supplier. Also, this object is quite large, 192 bytes in size. Most of that space is occupied by the string, obviously, as it is 32 bytes in size. The CPUs don't work in such sizes. The standard CPU cache line size is 64 bytes. If you look at the schematic on the screen, you can see the object oriented model data layout to CPU pipeline. And it is pretty terrible. So you have two objects side by side. Each of them are 192 bytes in size. But the data that we want to access say it would be width, height, and depth. Here is marked by required data. It's somewhere down the cache line. So when CPU tries to access such data, it needs to read at the beginning of the object, which is to access through pointer this. Then it needs to address the width, the height, and the depth. So currently they are grouped together, so likely they're gonna fit and fill the same cache line. But then to access the next object, you have all this noise in between. And when you read your cache line, your cache line will include also the quantity and probably uh, depth and cell price. These are all useless properties when trying to access the width, height and depth. So the CPU reads the first one, but then if memory is not ready for the second object, the CPU stalls and it has to wait for it, which is ridiculous. However, there is a better way of doing this. The SOA form separates each of the object's properties into a separate record, into a separate vector, array, whatever it might be. So here we want to gather width, height and depth. So we group them together in dimensions and we put them in a single vector of dimensions. As you can see from the graph, the required data for the CPU is packed nicely and densely together. CPU can access one data and the next one is already ready. The next cache line will be already prefetching and CPU can be running at full speed to process this data and get the result that we want. So here's some theory. So let's put this to the test and run some benchmark. Here we're running the object oriented data layout and each of the rows represents the problem solved at different scale with more and more objects. The bottom ones are the SOA data layout, the SOA form, and you can see the relative performance on the screen. We hover about 5x at smaller scales but at the larger scales, we actually grow to over 20x in performance improvement. So why is that? I think it should be clear to you all by now that at smaller scales, all our objects were able to fit in our data caches, the L1 and L2 data caches. The problem at the larger scales is no longer able to fit into L1 and L2. Therefore, we need to start referencing the main memory. And that's why the performance starts to degrade very, very fast here. To run these benchmarks, I used Google Benchmark, which is a micro benchmarking tool, and a link to it is available in the description below. Please comment on the video, subscribe, like or dislike this video. Everything helps. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.